Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug Dunbar. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome well, back after a week off. Yeah. yeah, a week off. It was kind of like Three Mile Island two weeks ago. I spilled, I, I, apparently I spilled something on the console and my computer had a meltdown. So. It happens. It happens. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of what happened last week. Not uh, bad. $600 later, we got it back. <laughs> oh, you told me it didn't cost very anything. It, it was nothing. Oh, okay. I'm just busting So, uh, yeah, we got it back. Uh, so, you know, we just felt it was best to not compromise on the quality of the show and make sure that if we do it, we, we do it the way we need to. So, anyway, we're back. Uh, we're back this week and um, we're ready to go. That's what I'm talking about, kids. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Sorry. So I'm a little you, discombobulated uh, here. Um, what are you smoking today, G? I am smoking a 125th year Gurkha um, cigar. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of Gurkha, but this is a is nice cigar. Is that like a t- same as the type of pickle? Like- yeah, it's like a Gurkha. Right? A Gurkha. A gur- not a Gurkha. In. A oh, okay. okay. All right. So it's a Gurkha. <laughs> He's got a Gurkha down there, too. That that? So that that's the name of the cigar. Um, the the company, I'm I'm sure there's some family. I I don't do a lot of history on Gurkha, unfortunately, but it's a uh, Brazilian, Dominican, Nicaraguan blend of cigar, and it's actually it's actually nice. It's it's definitely peppery, but um, so when it's you a, say that, um, it's almost you a mean that it's got tobacco from all those, those from three, those those three, three areas. Layers. You're right, yes. correct. The three layers. Yep. So, okay. so you, I know one of the things about Gurkhas that you usually complain about is they fall apart. Oh, horrendous! So I'm going to be watching. Well, so so I mean, throughout the they, show. they've um, through a, another a couple other um, cigar people that I know that are in the business as far as actually having cigars made and different things like that. Um, they ha- have had a, a bunch of complaints throughout the years about. The, it not burning properly, you know, the structure isn't there, um, you know, or it's it's too loose and it gets real hot, you know, all this stuff. So they in the last year, they have really stepped up their game about, you know, buckling down on that kind of stuff. But um, so anyway, this uh, 125th anniversary cigar is not a terrible cigar. Now, I'm not going to lie to you that uh, um, 80th anniversary that I smoked a couple weeks ago, there's no comparison. Yeah, well, you know, you so, know, but it's still a nice cigar. That's not a cigar you can have. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. The they never even released those into the no. states, but I just fell in into some luckiness and had some given to me. So cool. Well, so tonight I want to we want to dedicate our show to um, our puppy Pluto, who unfortunately passed away last night. Um, he started having some issues and my girls flew home from Nashville um, but unfortunately he passed away last night so um, they really they didn't get to see him but uh, you know we're gonna miss him sure he was a fantastic dog Um, really loved people just you know love to be you know around us you know it was great I th- in a way that we had the pandemic and I was working from home all that time so we really got to spend a lot of time with him and I think that was great for what turned out to be sure last you know year and a half or so so um, what anyway this what I, what I liked about Pluto was he was always willing to let me pet him <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> scratch his little butt and everything else and rub his ears and all that stuff he always let me do that he never complained yeah. We, I'm we, glad we got the chance to meet the yeah. little guy because well, he's we, so cute. I'm going to throw yeah. his picture back up again. Yeah. When we uh, first got him, we we kind of nicknamed him the Little Prince because right. he immediately took over the house like it was his. And of course, everybody loves me. I can do whatever I want, mm-hmm. just right from get the get go. And never we, in trouble. We yeah, we had a, a, a Pepper at the time, so we, we when we got him, Pepper was nine. So, you know, we said, well, this is the transition dog because we knew Pepper, they aren't around forever, unfortunately. 
And uh, yeah, so now I, I've been walking a dog at least uh, at least once a day almost since not, since 2001. So wow. it's going to be a, a hard to get used to not you know, not having to do that anymore. And the whole routine in the morning, and filling up his food and you know letting him out, you know all that stuff. So it's well, sad and. It's a it's a hard transition sure. for us, but I mean, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you got to move on. So. Yeah, it well, sucks, man. They yeah, they it's don't... never easy. Never no. easy. Absolutely. Well, I have good news for you. Um, What's that? When me and Karen travel here in the next month or two, um, George and Jimbo will just drop them off. <laughs> okay. okay. And you can you can well, still walk. Okay. My, okay. okay. So I'm, well, if I'm missing dogs, you don't have any you cats, do you? Yeah, I mean, no cats. cats yeah, no, no cats. No. Yeah, they're not cat lovers, but no, no. But Jimbo's always, he's always up for food or a snack. Oh, yeah. And, or, a, uh, or a dry leg. Dry yeah, leg. Like, oh, yeah. Like Pluto. Yeah. yeah always. And, uh, you know, and he likes to sleep in bed with, with everybody. So, you know, he's uh, very gaseous. And, uh, oh, yeah. So you're, oh, you're in for, for some oh, treats. Uh, that'll so, be fun. But, yeah. Uh, yeah so, uh, anyway, here's to Pluto. Pluto, you're going to be missed, and I know you're going to miss your, your family as well. Until next time. Salute. He had a great love, a great life, and he was loved. By many. Got lots of loves. So. Amen. Sweetie. Very sweet. So, all right. So, I know, G, you were wondering. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'll let you, I'll just tell you that this is our 20th show. Get the hell out of here. I didn't so. sleep last night. was wondering you were, about it. You couldn't, you couldn't. I was like, is it? 18th or is it he 23rd? woke up in the middle of the night. I heard him going 19, 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! It's like okay, it's it's okay, honey. You'll find out tomorrow. Even Jimbo came over and humped my legs. Like, what's wrong, Daddy? <laughs> what's wrong? I got gotcha. you. <laughs> oh my goodness! You're not going nowhere, Daddy. I'm hanging on to you. <laughs> on that note, anything good going on? Well, there was one. I started my first self-defense class this week. Did, so did you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I'm ever, we did group, like if you're attacked by a group. So the, the first lesson was if you're ever attacked by a group of clowns, you know, always go for the juggler. Oh, uh, da doom <laughs> And that's the absolute <laughs> life. Okay. Oh, you're stupid. Anyway. Uh, right. we're, we're talking, you know, about today, uh, we... We're talking about the, the clover, and that's, I mean, that's our featured whiskey, the clover mm -hmm. single barrel rye, which Karen is going to tell us about. Yeah, I'll tell and, you about You know, and it's kind of a mixture of whiskey, where whiskey and golf intersect, right? So There you go. There you go. That's Chris Snyder, isn't it? Oh, that's just, well, or Pat. Or Pat Patterson, that's right. That's right. They're always out there on the They're golf course. They're always coming back from golf when they tune in, so. Well, next time they're golfing and see if one of those guys can bring me back a ball washer would you nice so. yeah oh yeah i'm sorry i cannot talk about golf without thinking of caddyshack because it's oh, just where yeah. my mind that's, goes yeah <laughs> that's how we golf caddyshack <laughs> i'm good for like two holes and then that's excuse it excuse me but if i kill all the golfers they're gonna let me up and throw away the key <laughs> sorry that's Great movie, go. a classic. Yes, 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 kind of yes. So that's another one that kind of goes in the category of they, they could never make that movie today. I mean, no, just right. like Blazing Saddle right. and some of the other ones. It's too but, bad how people lose their sense of humor. I know, you, you can't even have a sense of humor anymore right. these days. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the tie-in with the Clover and Bobby Jones, the great golfer. Yep. But we'll let Karen tell us all about it. Should I uh, do a bottle cam? Since oh. we're I think to kick it off, let's go, uh, let's... Let's take a ride on the bottle cam, shall we? Right. Hey everyone, it's time for the bottle cam. The bottle cam. Yeah, that was 
funny. So uh, you got to check out the casting couch with this bottle can. Yeah, I want to make sure we feature some of the local scenery here at the Whiskey Roundtable. <laughs> well, I'll so tell we you. want people to be able to visualize this. You know, if you were here in the audience, this you might be. This is where you might be. You too can see all of our stuff. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, so, Karen, to answer your question. Yep. Look at it, it's splitting. It's, we should take that up to the it's camera. A, nah, it's it's not worth it. It's uh, right down the middle, yeah. right. And I'm, and I'm back down. here, so. So that's just a, a sign of not optimum rolling and crossing. Uh, yeah, it's the, the, you know they're not doing it 100 percent proper, right. but you know when when it splits down like that, and I, that's one of the main reasons why I don't smoke these cigars. But it that's was a, a gift, bummer. so unfortunately, but I'm I'm. How smoking. does it smoke though? Other than other than it splitting, How it's does... smoking good. It's it's a little bit. On the dry side, so if, if any of you cigar smokers out there, if you're uh, smoking cigars on a somewhat regular basis, you're going to have cigars like, I like to smoke cigars that don't dry me out. You know, I like a cigar that, you know, I don't have to keep reaching for my drink or keep reaching for my soda water just to hydrate my mouth. I don't like that. So this, this cigar is borderline that. It's a little bit dry. Uh, so... And it didn't disappoint. I said it was going to, you know, they're used to unraveling and cracking and doing all this stuff. And, you know, and I think on an anniversary cigar, it should be, in my personal opinion, uh, a lot better structure than what it is. So if I had to give this a, a one to five, it'd be a one minus. Okay. Wow. So. so if I was to actually try and have my first cigar, um, if I wasn't so health conscious. Yeah, a Gurkha brand, so to say. Wouldn't be the best one to start. If you said, hey, gee, if we were in, buying cigars or whatever, yeah. and you said, well, you know, this, this Gurkha looks nice, blah, 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 it feels pretty good, da, 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 da. I tell you to pass on. Go to go to, to, to building number two. <laughs> so there's no, is there anything you can do to prevent that from happening once you get that cigar home? Uh, no. It's Nothing. just humidification. You, you can, he, so you can humidify it to the T, and it'll just my all of my and you know this better than anybody, Karen. All of my humidors are exactly at sixty eight humidity, and all the cigars that I smoke out of those humidors, which is many, um, I can count on one hand in a year how many times a cigar doesn't burn properly or whatever. But this cigar always ends up the same way, so. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that's why I'm not. A, that's why I don't buy them. And you are not to. You know, you're an asshole about that. You check oh, yeah. that because I spend big money on stuff. Everything I have, I I, uh, duh, I shouldn't say that it sounds arrogant, but everything that I have that I enjoy, like whiskeys or cigars or what have you, I want what I want, and I don't mind paying the money for the extra product, so to say, or quality, so to say. But this one never, never well, meets that's the quality. We yeah, we say on this show, right? I mean, when it comes to whiskey, usually um, it, you get what you pay for. And sure. It's, and if you really want something good, you you know, it's, you're, it's worth but, the investment. But usually. for the price of this cigar, yeah, it's you know. It's and there not, are things out there that we sure. cover that are good values, right? But, sure. But in general, that's the rule we like to to say. So. So moving on to the clover single barrel straight what about whiskey. Uh, what do we got on the scroll real quick? I just, oh, what do we just got on the sorry, scroll? No, sorry, no, that's good. Um, got a, given lots of love to Pluto. We got yeah. lots of hearts out there. Amen. Matt Souza says he loved that dog. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, um, best dog ever. Thank you for the dedication. Um, yeah, and he then was kind of Lindsay's dog. Yeah. And then Jennifer Boggs just turns it right around and says, "So what are we drinking?" <laughs> <laughs> she says, uh, "That's Jennifer." <laughs> she just finished some uh, horse soldier. I don't know oh. why those two words together are yeah. so hard to say. Can you say it? Horse soldier. Horse, horse soldier. Yeah. Horse soldier. Mm -hmm. um, and she's getting ready to break into her unicorn bottle, Jefferson's Presidential Select 16 oh. year oh. twin oh. oak. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. shit, she's been talking about. Oh that shit. That was on her, uh, her go to, her dream list, yep. I think. Right. Yeah. Talking about Negro, Steve is down there my, in Texas. My brother, what's <laughs> up? You're the whitest Negro I ever met. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I know we got the same skin color. I get it. <laughs> uh, so Brad, me, me, and, uh, oh, me and me and me and Steve were trying to purchase another Porsche today, but I don't think the guy is. He's too. 
doesn't really want to sell. He's had the car for 30 some years, second owner of the car, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't think he's ready to come off the come price. Off, come, no, the price was unbelievably good, and uh, but he's emotionally attached to the car, so that yeah. was it. So we'll see what happens. Um, me and the me and the owner had a great conversation today, and uh, there's other people that want the car, but. Uh, um, they're not really getting backed into kind of playing games, but I said if you're if you're when you're ready to sell the car, call me. We pay cash, so so we'll see what happens. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, um, got a couple more out there. Right. Rob from up north up is up north. Rob drinking the Wellington Creek Straight Rye, and he is smoking a Gurkha War Pig. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I, I never I've had the Wellington. So, um, so Rob was supposed to be back this week, but that changed, and he's got business to do. So, uh, you know, Kurt stopped over this week, and we had a quick conversation. But um, so Rob would Rob would probably be here today if he uh, didn't have other Aww. other things through the business, so to say. So, yeah. but anyway, we miss you, brother. Duty calls. What are Duty you gonna calls. do? Sure. Rob's a great guy, man. Uh, Steve Williams and John Donnelly are uh, drinking Four Roses Small Batch. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's oh, good drink. favorite. Good, yeah. good drink. Um, yeah. that's really it. Everyone's saying, you know, hey, and congratulating each other on their what they're drinking. So All right. nice, good All right. going. Up in you guys. Like right. Let's see. move on. Yeah. Meanwhile, okay, my glass is empty, oh. so I gotta hurry up and do this news so I can for right. this well, history. So stop. I can. What time? When should I stop you? Stop you at one. Just put a nipple on that. One third. Two, so. There you go. That's that's good. I just need something to okay. wet my whistle. All right. The clover. Here we go. Let's do it. The clover. So the clover, as you had mentioned, is named after the legendary golfer Bobby Jones. So let me get a picture of Mr. Bobby Jones up here. He's there pretty. He he's pretty freaking hot, man. Yeah, I'm sorry hot. if I do say so myself. Well, call him. Well, he's so. <laughs> He's dead. He's that's all right. All for Jones. <laughs> hold a seance. Wait, let's hold hands. I'll call him up. Uh, anyway, who is Bobby Jones? Uh, Bobby Jones, he was actually, let me get back to the, our camera here. He was actually born on St. Patrick's Day in Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia in 1902. Mm -hmm. And he battled health issues as a kid, so his doctor said, Go out and start golfing to, you know, exercise, kind of, get your body moving, sure. Yeah. To strengthen, to strengthen. Sure, immune him. system, whole thing. Um, but during his peak between 1923 and 1930, which he was very young at that time, yeah, yeah. Uh, he dominated the top level amateur competition in golf and he competed successfully against some of the world's best golfers. So, you know, to kind of bring you to modern day, that would have been the Tiger Woods sure. at the time, yeah. but he was even more. He was above Tiger um, yeah. in his his um, abilities. So he often beat stars such as Walter Hagen and Gene Sarazen. Sarazen. Um, and they were the top pros at the time. And he mostly earned a living being a lawyer, and he only competed in golf as an amateur. So oh, it's pretty cool. As an amateur, he beat these pros. Nice. Um, and he, he was on a part-time basis, and he actually retired from competition at 28. Wow. Um, but he continued to make a lot of money um, as a golf instructor and equipment designer. And interestingly enough... He founded and helped design the Augusta National Golf uh, Club. That was my next question. Is the Masters, where the, the Masters, Masters tournament exactly. is held. Yeah. Um, he uh, co-founded it, and he came out of retirement in 1934 to play in the Masters, but only on an exhibition basis through 1948. Nice. One of his claim to fame is he is the only player in history to achieve the original Grand Slam in a single calendar year. And that was in 1930. Right. So. It consisted of wins in the Amateur Championship at Old Course at St. Andrews, Scotland. The wow. Open Championship at the Royal Liverpool Golf Club in Hoy Lake, England. The U.S. Open at Interlochen Country Club in Minnesota. Hmm. And the U.S. Amateur Marion Golf Club in Pennsylvania. That was between May and September of 1930. 
Well, were you? I'm sorry. Were you yeah. gonna say something? I didn't. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah, the grand slam, and for an amateur, that's like it's unbelievable. Sure. Absolutely. Unbelievable. And such a young guy too. Yeah. Um, so, what's the connection between Bobby Jones and Clover? Like, what does that have to do? Um, when he was young, he received a four-leaf clover from his mother, and it was for good luck. And he, it's said that he wore it in every match. And each four-leaf clover is said to hold a different meaning, hope, faith, love, and luck. And if you look at the bottle of clover, you will see those um, on the actual the bottle. bottle. So here's, <clears throat> here's a little... Uh, picture that you got of the the clover with the four yeah four words there four leaves. <coughs> um so leaving with uh talking about bobby jones and i'm gonna leave talking about bobby jones with a quote from him which i thought was really cool um golf is the closest game to the game we call life you get bad breaks from good shots, and you get good breaks from bad shots. Yep. But you have to play the ball where it lies. Ain't it the truth? Amen. So, um, let's see. So. Because you got to take what life gives you. And amen. Roll from there. Yep. Roll with the punches, man. Amen. Isn't that the truth? Whew. So, I'm getting, getting, I'm getting my own personal summer over here. Oh, shit. Um. Oh. MGP is the distiller for Clover so, Whiskey. It's a contract distilled product. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's actually bottled by Piedmont Distillers, which is it, about 25 miles north of Greensboro, North Carolina. It's in a town called Madison. Okay, so uh, distilled at MGP. Yep. Then um, they bottle or they age and bottle somewhere else in greensboro in yep okay it this just this um piedmont was founded by joe mahalik in 2005 and it became north carolina's first legal distillery since prohibition i like how they say first legal distillery that's what i'm talking about um so what we're having tonight is first, wait first legal distillery since prohibition well, in that's where all right. All right. So we are drinking the, um, sorry, single barrel straight rye whiskey. It's a 91 proof, and it is a high rye. And it I says would say. it follows MGP's 95 5 recipe. So it's 95% rye, 5% barley. So okay. um, I'm sure we're going to get a little rye. On the uh, palate with this one. I think so. You, think you get a little heat. So you know why is the five percent rye or five percent barley in there? Why is that? Do tell. Again, most American whiskeys have five about five percent to seven percent um, barley in the mash because it barley has a uh, an enzyme that's really critical to getting the yeast metabolism going. So that's usually why. Eat, you know, you rarely would see like a hundred percent rye or. Mm -hmm. or corn they usually if they do that they have other ways of trying to trigger the metabolism but but that's why you, you usually get a, at least five percent barley when you said it was 95.5 and we were trying to find out what that meant i was pretty sure it was barley so for that reason so. <laughs> yes. anyway. and you were correct sir but 95 percent that's some rye that's gonna be rye that's right so that's right that's, 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 that's <laughs> Let's pass that bad boy out and see Let's what we can it. get oh, into. Oh, shit, okay. G's got us, G's got us covered. Put I got that it. Put down that uh, splitting up. One for you. Falling apart Gurkha. <gasps> oh, shit. He has been so klutzy this I week. Have. I have. I have. He spilled I a whole thing of soy sauce all week. over the counter. Oh, right. Everything I did, I was knocking stuff over and banging into stuff. Notice well, how he, he almost dumped it. my glass, because I'm sure if this hit well, ground, he was going to be drinking this. So I like Shit that. happens. I just like the look of that. I got to tell you. Oh, it's color. The color's beautiful. Very ambery. Yeah. Just a slight, you know. I don't know. I kind of think it's kind of, you know, most most are three char, but I, I, I'd have to say maybe, I don't know this for fact, but I might say that this is maybe closer to a four char. But it's and heavy. It's got like a, 
definite ruddy cherry kind of tincture to it. It's not just amber. It's got some reds in it. Yep, I would definitely Which I agree usually, with that. My experience is that's usually a good sign. So for, like cherries. for a rye, I get no ethanol. No, me neither. Not on the nose at all. So Nothing. We're, okay, we're nosing already. Okay. Yeah, sorry. We're just, we just sorry, we couldn't wait. No, that's we're right. excited. Just. Um, oh, I, yeah. I I uh, smell apples and sweetness. Um, you know, obviously, you know, a little caramel, a little vanilla. You, that's usually in everything. Um, I would definitely say maybe a baking spice or a brown sugar, if you will. Yeah, I, I get your. I definitely get your apple, Karen. Almost like maybe a not so much like a green apple, but maybe like a, no like sweet a red apple, apple, red apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah cherry, I'll, I'll maybe say red some apple. Cherry too. Yeah. Next in there, um, dark fruit. It's nice. Does it's anybody sweet. get like some floral notes almost? A little bit, yeah. Like some. A little bit of fresh flower kind of. Let me uh, let me recleanse again. Sorry, kids. No, and of okay. course, the quintessential um, vanilla from the from the oak. So I was expecting more peppery. I was too. Just because of being the a high, high rye. rye, exactly. Um, but maybe we'll get, get that on the palate. I yeah, don't I'm not getting that pepper that I was no. going to expect from a high rye. So. Look at me talking the talk like I know what I'm doing. Oh, you're yeah, right. holy shit. shit. So after I let this sit for a minute, it's very consistent. The legs are beautiful in it. Yeah. Really, really are. Very nice. Okay. All right, should we, should we dive in? I'm kind of becoming an admirer. Let's see if the palate lives up to it. I'm excited. Yeah. Me too. Let's do it. Wow. Wow, wow. Wow, is that nice? That is really, I'm, that's smooth, man. It, it was very, it's very light uh, on the pepper, real light. And, and the aromatic mouth, on the tongue, just like. Um, the mouthfeel is real smooth, real. Yeah, like um, sweet. Silky. There's a spicy, mm. almost tropical fruit, some cinnamon. It's kind of a long finish. Yeah. It's very. Um, I get a. I get a, at, at the end. At the end of the finish, so to say, I kind of get a little honey out of it. It's. It's definitely some kind of sweetness on the end, but I. I it kind of reminds me of honey. I get almost like a little bit of. Like a. Cola kind of. Somewhere I see in the that. middle on my on my tongue, I get almost like a cola flavor. That's that's exactly when I first tried it. It's like I said, it was silky. It does hit you like a cola. It's not peppery at all. It's not hot for ninety five percent rye. A little bit of dry oak. Yeah, dry oak. There on yeah. The finish, but, yeah. But um, it's for, nicely for, fragrant. Um, for a quick minute, I, I know it sounds silly, yeah. but for a quick, quick, a quick less than a second after after I uh, drank it for a quick second, I almost got a. A vapor of of mint, so to say, but that's you know that's just my palate. But anyway, it's very nice. Yeah, it's really nice. very holy nice. crap. I really like this. I, it is really. So I didn't uh, read the nose notes, so I'm gonna go back and, and hit those. Um, the nose is mint, which you said oh, you're, you're getting on the palate. Oh, big okay. G. Look at me. Okay. Big G. Come on. Hey, Big G, that's really quite damn impressive. <laughs> that's right. Um, also on the nose, citrus, cherry, yep. brown sugar. I think we all. Yep, 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 yep. The toasted oak was less so, but beneath everything were soft floral notes. It's very nice. Yeah, I say we hit it. I, I, I'd say, yeah, and that, I, I'd love no, that hat. You know, when I get those floral notes and a whiskey i don't know it's always impressive to me i don't know um because you don't usually get that in a correct it, it, i've never gotten that in i will call an average whiskey or you know a, a bargain kind of whiskey or you know um, it's only on high-end kind of product that's a little bit special when i get that so uh, that's kind of always something i i admire when i get that kind of off key what's that bottle how much? 
You know, I don't even remember because I bought it when I was down in Nashville gotcha. visiting the girls. And so I you just, paid retail for it. I, I'll, yeah, I I'll was, say that I've seen it online as I was doing I, I some research too. between I have too. 50 I have and too. 70 I told, the, I told Doug that pre show. Like 75 bucks or something. So okay. My best guess. And I would say it is uh, very pleasing for the money. I would say it's worth Holy it. Absolutely. Sure. For I, sure. I, I would have that on my bar. I would have a very hard time in a blind taste test to say this was a rye. I agree. I know. It's very surprising. It doesn't drink like a rye. It's, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious, you know, at that kind of a percent rye. And they really, um, it doesn't say age anywhere, but it's, it is a single barrel straight. Of course, so we know that it's at least four years old. Um, but that's exquisite, I think. I did Very find nice. something out about that. What, uh, what uh, did I say? I'm wondering it was if anybody else that's watching 10? out there, or Jennifer Boggs, has ever had this. That's mm -hmm. nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So this, again, we try to pick things that you can get. Maybe, maybe in Ohio it's a little hard to find, but it's obtainable. So I, I would say to everybody, if you have a chance to get this, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, I thought I had uh, the aging on here, but I... No worries. I do not, but um, wow. Uh, do you have anything on the palette you want, or even the finish that you want to mention before no, I, I... think I think I... I, 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 I think the, the finish is where I... In this, which is a little bit uh, in reverse, the finish is where I get the oak. And it's a, it, as Greg said, I think it's kind of a medium to long finish. And it's very soft and rounded and, you know... You kind of get the floral stuff, and then the oak, and then it's, you know, a little bit of a dryness at the end. Yeah, you do. You do have a little bit of dryness at the end, absolutely. It's uh, but it's it's, it's nice pleasing though. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not like nice. a. It's not like a dry tongue. It's yeah. it's just a little bit to let you know it's it's definitely oak, you know. That you get off the bat, you get those fruits we talked about, whether you know, kind of the apple and cherry. Then you get the floral notes, and then it kind of goes into some, some maybe some dry oak, vanilla. It, this reminds me of the um, description you gave on the cigar about how it was really dry, and you hate the way that yeah, it leaves your yeah, mouth dry. Right. This doesn't. This doesn't dry you out at no, all. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. Um, it's, I agree. I, for a whiskey, I would say it's very refreshing. Actually, it is. Yeah, I re I really like it. So I, I keep waiting uh, for the heat to come. Yeah, and it does, and it never comes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? No, it it doesn't. never. I mean, you never feel the it's heat. Not you don't. high proof, but it's all. You know, it's 91. I mean, so but not, for, for being a, yeah. a rye, though, a rye. A lot of ryes yeah. are spicy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I, I, you know, it's 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 very enjoyable. So um, I think before we get into the ratings, let's take another ride on the bottle count, shall we? Amen. We can definitely right do there. that. Uh, where am I going? Here it is. Hey everyone, it's time for the bottle cam. The bottle cam. Okay. get to the rating let's uh see what they say on oh, the tasting okay. notes okay. Oh, right. oh, okay. um according to the website that i picked up the palette is cinnamon vanilla and brown sugar okay gave it a sweet and slightly spicy tingle the middle was cola ah there you go dark chocolate and almond mm. maybe the dark chocolate i could go with there is something I'd Maybe. go with that. You guys yeah. said cola. I didn't agree with you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, um, but uh, you know, you know, mocha or whatever that could have been. That could have been, and for me, could have been. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't really my palate or my nose and all that other stuff, so to say. Sorry, kids. Um, I don't normally. I might think it might be mocha, but I never can could pinpoint it that it is mocha or some some type of chocolate or whatever so again that's just my palate 
And again, you know, I, I'll smoke a cigar during the show, so I'm sure that has something I'm to sure say. Yeah, it does. That's, that's yeah, absolutely. What, what, that's a whatever. good point. So. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, I, I it's it's got a lot of complexity. Sure. And that's what we, we tend to like. If, you, if you're really into whiskey, that's one of the things you look for. And I, this delivers on that, that front. I agree. I so, agree. So what I'm thinking is uh, maybe we rate this bad boy and uh, fill our glasses and uh, move on to the whiskey whiz. Absolutely. Okay. Like I, I, I will so. say there is something that I picked up on the finish that I would agree with. Um, this person that did the review on it said that they thought the finish was medium to long, but as they continued to sip it, it grew in length. Yeah. yeah. And I would definitely, okay. definitely agree, agree with, with that. that. I would do too. Um, and they did get cocoa powder. Okay. On the finish okay. for that. All right. So I don't usually go first, but I'm gonna, I'll do that today. I'm going to set the bar high because I really, really enjoy this. Go ahead. It is something I would like to try to keep on my shelf. Amen. Um, I'm going with a 4.1 on this. Oh shit! That's high for the whiskey roundtable, but I'm that is high. I'm giving it. It's been a while since I read something really struck me like, hey, this is really something I want to have when I'm in the mood. It's just it's it's going to be a good thing to sip on the back porch or with friends. So yeah, I'm I'm going to try to find some more of this. Very good score. Yeah, man. Very good. Good. Very nice. You want to go? You want me to go? What do you? Uh, uh, you can go. Go ahead. Okay. You won't like my score, but go ahead. Uh, bitch. Won't be the first time that I disagree with you. Okay. But I'm always right, so it's okay. Anyway, I, on the other hand, again, I'm going to go with the first number that popped in my head, and it is a 4.5. Oh, wow. Um, I am extremely impressed with this one. I don't know if it's because my expectation was one way, and it delivered something totally different and surprising. But it's okay. very refreshing. It's very smooth. It's clean. It doesn't drink like a whiskey to me. Um, you know, I'm the tequila vodka girl. And, you know, some of the brown liquors can, can be a little harsh sometimes. Amen. Yes. Um, but this, not at all. And especially for being a 95% rye, I am blown away. Yeah, and I, what I like is it, again, it delivers everything I like in a whiskey with it, it being, it's soft without being wimpy. Agreed. Know, it, it doesn't taste watered down and wimpy. So, so, okay, G, that brings us to you. A big score, 4.5 on the round table. That is, a, that's, that's pretty, that's getting up in the stratosphere. Okay, 4.1. Why did you All say right. we wouldn't like your well, score? Well, I just got to keep everybody paying attention to the show. <laughs> yeah, that's on the edge of a solid four point one. Uh, so. I would, I would, uh, I definitely want that bottle. And uh, I know my brother's coming up either September or no. I know he's coming up for Thanksgiving. Uh, we want that bottle. So um, definitely right. four point one. Got to have it. I think uh, if uh, Donley comes up and all that stuff. That's, that's a great bottle. It so really I do is. know that if you go to their website, um, they do tell you, and a, a lot of places you can buy this are golf courses, believe it or not. No I kidding. did but see that, yes. they give you yes. a list of places you can obtain it. So. Awesome. Very good. Great product. This yeah. is, yeah, uh, uh, amazing. Not, but not disappointing pleasant, at all. You know, when you try, it was neat because none of us had ever had this, right? No, I have so, not. And then to have it, you know, be so pleasantly surprised. It's, it's, I, uh, that's why we like doing this show. It's sure. it's fun when that happens. I got to. I have to get a bottle. Kurt's got to try this. Yeah, yeah. he's I a agree. huge rye guy. I agree. Guy, he's got to try this. He's going to be blown away. I haven't seen it on the shelf anywhere, but I'm going to definitely maybe start hitting some golf clubs. And there you go. See what I can find. Cool. Uh, Bring right. me back a ball washer, would you? Why the last? You fell off the last one. Well, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> Nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> All right. So oh with my. that, I mean, we, what the, do we uh, got on the, the uh, whiskey wizard is going to tell us a little bit about. You know, we we did a whole month on pairing fine whiskeys with fine cigars. We're going to talk a little about pairing food with whiskey, which up until uh, creating that episode, I really, you know, to me. Um, I think I think we're all the same way. We kind of kept our whiskey separate, you know. Like pairing food with whiskey was kind of, or pairing food was I always think of wine. 
Sure. Um, but I, this really opened up my eyes. So anyway, hope that's, let, let, yeah. let's scroll one more time. And then we'll move on to Whiskey Wizard. Are we okay with that? You, yeah. you want to see the scroll? Yeah, let's see what we got. Uh, we're having a Brokeback Mountain minute. Uh, <laughs> Rob Richter says he misses you too, brother. Oh, uh, that's my boy, Rob. Good dear dude, man. Lord. Matt Sosa says they call it golf because every other four-letter word was taken. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer um, Bogg says she has not tried it, but she is very intrigued. All right. I recommend it, guys. I think she'll log in. Oh. Someone's shoot. here. Um, Who's ringing the doorbell? I don't know. Let's, we'll so, move on to the uh, Whiskey Wizard. Yeah, let's move on to the Whiskey Wizard. We'll come back to the scroll, see what's doing. We got uh, we got company, kids. All right. So you hang tight. We'll be right we'll back. We'll see you in about nine. We don't. Be right we'll back. See you in a bit. We'll be back. Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Tonight we're talking about the topic of pairing foods with whiskey. Now I have to start with a bit of a confession. Up until now, I rarely had whiskey with food. Whiskey was to be enjoyed before or after the meal. Now there's been one exception that I'll talk about later. During the meal, I've been more inclined to enjoy a nice glass of wine or a cold pilsner. But I recently read a few articles and some books that delve considerably into this topic. So I've been convinced that whiskey can be a perfect complement to anything from hors d'oeuvres to dessert. And this ability to make great pairings includes bourbons, ryes, Scottish single malts, and Irish whiskies. Suffice it to say, some types of whiskies are more suited to certain types of cuisine. In the USA, we've been overall less likely to pair our favorite pour or dram with food, but this is quite common in Europe and other parts of the whiskey drinking world. So we're just catching on a bit, I guess. First, it seems there are some basic guidelines here. We don't want either the food or the whiskey to dominate. We want the flavors that complement each other well, but not necessarily producing too much of the same thing. We don't necessarily want to pair a sweet dessert food with one of the sweeter whiskeys, styles, or offerings within a category. We may not want to choose an Isla single malt to serve alongside of your best really smoky brisket. So we want them to be flavor friends, but not twins. And as I'm rather a novice at this yet, I'm gonna try some of these right here on the segment and I'll give you my honest feedback. Okay, I'll start with one that experience has taught me does pair well with whiskey and that's chocolate. Bourbon goes well with most chocolates. Milk chocolate pairs well with the spicy dryness of rye whiskey. And for dark chocolate, that's a perfect match with more full-bodied whiskeys. And I know from experience, dark sea salt chocolate is exquisite with my favorite rich, smoky, peaty Isla single malts. Dark chocolate with orange is supposed to be right at home with malt whiskeys having citrus notes, like many Speysides or the straight up Glenmorangie Tenure, which to me, has a bit of a bitter orange on the nose and palate. Okay, so I'll give this a try. Here's the Glenmorangie 10, and a bit of orange flavored dark chocolate. So when tasting, I'll take a sip, take a little bite, and then follow with a second sip, and I'll give you my impressions. I know this whiskey very well. It's one of my go-tos. It has just a very soft and luxuriant profile. I 
have to say that's really, really excellent. So there's no question that those two complement each other very well. So let's get a bit cheesy. Like whiskey, many cheeses are aged and contain a broad range of subtle flavors and aromas. Aged cheddar is great with smoky scotches. Blue and Roquefort sit well with spicy, full-bodied bourbons and ryes. Soft cheeses like Camembert or Brie need a light floral whiskey. Perhaps a lowland single malt such as Glen Kinchy or Bladnock. I think that that delicate Inchgauer or Speyside whiskey we tried on the show last year would also be a good match. Of course, many soft to mid-bodied whiskeys that are cask finished and X wine casks will practically yell out for this pairing with cheese. Here's some uh, well-aged cheddar that I'll try with this bold, smoky Lagavulin Isla single malt. Wow, that, that works wonderfully well as, as well. Um, well, the, the cheese uh, seems to make the dram smoother and richer and, and really lengthens the finish. So it's, um, it just complements the smokiness in a really, really nice way. Uh, well, okay, fruits and nuts are great treats to bring out when tasting whiskey. The sweeter the nut, the stronger and bolder the whiskey. Pecans and pistachios, for example. Bourbons do well matched with more bitter nuts like almonds and Brazil nuts. Smoky whiskeys do well with roasted peanuts or cashews. Dried fruit pairs with most whiskeys, especially bourbons that tend to be high in fruit esters, as we learn in our Chemistry of Whiskey episode. Fresh apples, like most desserts, require soft, light, or floral whiskeys. Again, like Lowland and Speyside scotches, or many of the pure potstale Irish whiskeys, such as Tyrconnell. Here's a splash of Tyrconnell to give it a try with some fresh apple slices. Wow, again, another surprise. That's really nice too. It's hard to explain, but it just really, that the tart of the apple just really kind of bumps up all the, uh, all the notes in this whiskey. I need to have a little bit more. Wow, quite exquisite. This brings us to the main course, meat. Steak pairs well with medium-bodied bourbons and ryes or lightly peated scotch whiskeys. Most other types of beef cuts and meatloaf go great with a good smoky single malt or full-bodied rye. Salmon or oysters are best with an Isla single malt or high proof rye. According to the owner of Deer Irving on Hudson, a swank Manhattan rooftop whiskey bar, Sushi goes perfect with a dram of Dalwhinnie single malt scotch. No doubt, bacon and barbecue ribs and many southern foods go well with almost any type of bourbon. For savory chicken or sausage, weeded bourbons like Weller's or Maker's Mark seems a most perfect fit according to another whiskey-focused restaurateur. Sweeter barbecue sauces may work best with ryes like Michter's Single Barrel Rye. So here I've got a bit of barbecued pork with some sweet barbecue sauce that I'm going to try with this Michter's Single Barrel Rye. Oh, so nice. Get not 
too much here, but it's easier said than done. Oh, wow. Really has them coming really to life on the palette in a way I wouldn't have thought. Wow, just makes both of them better. I guess like a good pairing should. Hmm. Anyway, this is something you can all research on your own. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Next time you cook up a great meal for friends who appreciate whiskey, refer back to this episode or do your own research. You'll quickly arrive at some great pairings to go with what you're serving. Okay, all, we love food and we love whiskey. Why shouldn't they go together? Have a unique food and whiskey pairing that you found work well? Please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. Slangeva and Bon Appetit. And now, back to the live show. Okay, well, thanks, Whiskey Wizard, for that. But before we go back to the live show, I just wanted to take this opportunity to let everybody uh, try this out and see what they think if they uh, liked it as much as I did. So we've got here our Michter's uh, single barrel rye that uh, I tried in the pairing that I really liked so much. So we're going to see what Greg and Karen think of it. Okay. Um, so uh, if you just take a little, maybe a, let's take a little sip. Maybe get our our tongue uh, seasoned a bit, take another little sip, and then we're gonna go in and have the, take a bite of this barbecue pork, and then uh, we're gonna see how the whiskey pairs with it and just give our impressions, so. Mm -hmm. Take another little sip, and then we're gonna go in. Right. Give it a taste. And then, I'll try to attack, kids. And then, um, and then we'll take our final pairing sip of the whiskey afterwards. Dang, that's good. Mm. Is that Arby's? What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's from Curly's? Or? No, that is mm -hmm. really good. Yeah, that is really, really good. good. Almost as good as if G had made it, I think. Almost. Okay, now let's go in. <laughs> let's go in on the whiskey and see how that mm. kind of pairing works, you know, just like you would pair a wine with some food. Mm. Mm. Nice. So to me, very nice. Yeah, you know, yeah. That really, that to me, it just kind of. I don't know it, it, it enhances both of them. It does. Yeah, try, it does. Uh, try one more again. It's definitely different. It's um, it, and it works a lot better than I was thinking. Very nice. As I said, um, I really only thought about wine as a food pairing thing. Before I went through and did you know, that. You know, it almost, <laughs> you guys call me crazy. Cause I've never done this before with pairings. I mean, I'm usually used to just drinking and eating. So, right. um, it actually, after the second taste of that and then trying this a second time, it almost tasted like it had bourbon in it. Yeah. It's very good. The pork. And, the pork. And I, I agree. That's uh, exactly what awesome. I thought too. Really and it, awesome. Yeah. And I thought it enhanced both. Of sure them, did. Not just saying that. It, it, it took of... it took the burn out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's not really a heavy burn, but it, it literally took the burn out uh, on the second try, if that makes sense too. It did. And so. I, I got, you know, a lot more out of the whiskey too. I got a lot of brown sugar, very mm -hmm. sweet taste mm -hmm. out of the whiskey after trying very nice. the pork. Um, and then the whiskey... Like you said, it made it taste like there was bourbon in the pork. So it they did. complemented each other very nicely. It did, for sure. Do you remember last week when we were last show and we we tried the, the, the sniffer kit? Yes. Yeah. It, so it may, I think a little bit of that happens here too, where it brings out, you know, you've got some, probably some brown sugar in the barbecue sauce or something, and that brings those elements out or complements them in the whiskey. It is, it's really good. And um, most baking spices, I think, were kind of what you get in a rye with barbecue sauce and that's what was recommended by the experts uh, to pair with like barbecue chicken barbecue pork 
because uh, the, the, a good rye, they said, is, a, is an excellent pairing to bring out the best in both. So, awesome. I just wanted to give it a try. And now, back to the live show. You'll see me, I kind of... We're back. <laughs> I didn't realize okay. the transition was that quick. <laughs> what's up, kids? <laughs> oh, hello again. Hey, hey, what's up? So, yeah, I mean, uh, food with whiskey, surprisingly, uh, everything that kind of when I started doing the research, I got hints from different people and different articles I read. Right. And, and then I kind of picked out of those the ones I thought would be interesting to try. And Cameron was actually home at the time, my son, and he was off camera there and trying them each with me. And we were both kind of blown away at how well that they all worked. Um, but, uh, you know, it was just amazing. The, the I remember the Irish whiskey with the, the apple slices was incredible. They all were. Uh, I, I'd known about the chocolate and the, the orange chocolate with Glen Morangy for some time. But, but when I did the... the the uh, barbecue pork with the Michter's uh, single barrel rye, that was just like, I was like, oh my God, you know. Yeah, I, I never thought of whiskey with food, but it, it works. I've, d I've done a lot of wine tastings with food. Um, yeah, did, did that for, for a long time with a friend of mine. Um, you know, was it, food always, you know, people always do ask me about why don't you do a food segment, uh, Scott Royblath, uh, you know, chef, if you will. Um, you know, we talked about doing food and, and pairings and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you'll be amazed. You know, when we did the pairing uh, of the pulled pork with the, uh, with, the, with the bourbon was fantastic. And I was all up for the task. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I would love to get together and, and, and uh, let's do let's do some of that for, for our future shows yeah yeah you we know, should, be should good. do a little bit more uh, in the future about food and whiskey pair because that I just I, I found it really intriguing after kind of years of just ah, whiskey is an after dinner thing or a way before dinner thing I did it, it, I don't know if you remember this but this past Valentine's Day I had uh, we have eight couples here and we did a surf and turf mm -hmm. and I had everything set up to pair with beer and we have beer drinkers and whiskey drinkers and uh, we did surf and turf and they were so engulfed in the food that uh, nobody wanted nobody cared about <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cared about the chocolate at yeah. the end for the dessert. They didn't care about any of that stuff. And I'm like, well, there goes that. But anyway, so. but uh, One of the happens. ones that uh, I, I read about, uh, I commented, but I didn't do it, was the, where they said the perfect uh, whiskey with sushi was the Glen Kinchy 15. So. Glen Kinchy 15. Yeah, so that's one to try. That's one I want to try in the future. So. All right. All right, so let's go back to the scroll because we had okay. we had some company. We had right. some company. Um, okay, we talked about Matt Souza calling it golf because every other four-letter word was taken. Um, Jennifer Boggs has not heard it, but she said high rise are usually sweet and oaky and delicious, and they usually don't bring the heat. That's, so that's where we got. All yep. Right. Well, that's certainly true. Of yeah, this probably, in, in my personal opinion. That has everything to do with the, uh, um, uh, what was it? Not, Distilling? Not, no, 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 not not hops. Um, barley? Barley. It has everything to do with the barley. Hmm. Just that little that little bit. It has everything to do with the change of, um, so, of rye, basically. So. Well, I mean, it certainly is needed to get that, that good mash. And um, without it, you, uh, you won't get... The full distillation will get the full development of all those esters. If you remember the whiskey wizard chemistry episode we did, so uh, one of the ones I'm going to redo sometime in the near future. All right. <laughs> very important when it comes to all these things we talk about with flavors, and when we talk about 
what happens in the barrel and all that stuff. So what else we got on the scroll, kids? We got uh, Jennifer says that, uh, dang, Karen, you've developed your flavor profile. <laughs> well, you hang around with these two. She did and, say oh. that, of course, the tipsier you are, everything tastes better, which is, of course, true. <laughs> Can't deny yeah, you that, know. so... Um, so we had uh, talked about what everyone was drinking earlier, and uh, Rob up north was drinking a Wellington Creek straight rye. So Jennifer asked him, what's the mash on that? And that's also a 95% rye and 90 proof. So um, in theory, very close to what yeah, we were drinking close. tonight. Um, so good pick there, Rob. Amen, Rob. Very appropriate. Rob, bring me a bottle. I'll pay you for it. Let's try it. There you Let's go. Try it. There you go. You, me, and Kurt. Let's try it. Um, Maybe we bring Doug over like we did last time. And yeah. Well, yeah. That was a good time. Um, Jennifer Boggs says steak and bourbon is always a good match. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Matt Souza said you have a tough du job, Doug. <laughs> I know. Somebody has Wait. to do it, though. <laughs> Let me know when you critique a Chinese buffet in whiskey, because he's in. Who's that? Yeah. Matt. He Matt. Yeah. Asian oh. Food. Yeah. oh, me so horny. He was <laughs> over with uh, kimchi. We love you a long time. I just kimchi never, is good. Cameron loves it. I, just, I like it. Dan Ruth, who's been on the show, I know he yep. loves it. I just never developed the... Me and Fresh, man. Kimchi, man. We'll too. eat it all. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fermented vegetable it's guy. It's very good. Well, there is bad out there. I'm not going to lie to you, yeah. but... I've had bad, but most of the time I've had good kimchi. Let's take all these vegetables. Hey, let's stick them in a, in a yeah. pot. Put them in a kitty litter box let's, and let them let's roll out and, and bury it in the yard. <laughs> and then let's come back about six months later and let's, let's have some of and it. And let's eat it. You are, <laughs> you are stupid. Go ahead. Oh, my goodness. RJ. I know. There's probably RJ. Some kimchi people will give me a. Hell What's R.J. got to say? Anyway. R.J. is out there and he said, hey, you better save me some. I think he wants some of that pulled yeah. pork we were eating. Oh, okay. okay. And okay. he says, you know what pairs really well with whiskey? More What's whiskey. A, oh, yeah. That's my dude whiskey, right there. Whiskey has always <laughs> been a long time favorite of mine. He knows. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Amen. Oh, shit. Good. Let's, get, let's that move on. That certainly doesn't suck. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it certainly doesn't good. suck. This is true. I, my glass is empty again. Would I, you like... Well, you got a refill during the Whiskey Wizard, geez, too. I, I know. You have a hole in that glass? Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones? Yeah, there's a hole in this glass. All right. Would you like some more? I'll take it. I'll take some more, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... We'll have to save a little for Kurt. We'll have to save a little Kurt, for Kurt. Kurt who? What? Kurt who? I'm sorry. Um, so, do we have any... News? I don't think you said you did not have any grab news any today. news tonight. Any news. Um, Doug, do you want to do any news? Or since we're about an hour well, in? We're an hour in, so I guess we'll... We'll save it I for another day. Are we going to get to the news? Or? I don't know. Why don't you, you do it? Okay, let let's me just, do a let story me, I'll, I'll or two. Do, you know what? I'll do one we'll get into the closing. Victor's 10-year-old ride. Ah. 2021 release. And you were talking about another one you recently got. Correct. Um, so in a way, that could be news. So why don't you follow that up? with this, but okay. uh, Straight Rye, uh, it's a 10-year-old, 46.4 ABV, price 170 bucks, so it's a little dear, released just this month, July 2021. Availability is limited, there's a surprise. So it's a single barrel rye distilled and bottled in Kentucky, 10 years old, it's almost, uh, it's the most limited whiskey that Michter's produces, or Mishters, however you want to pronounce it. It's Mitchters. Mike. Terz. Remember Mike Michael oh, and Mike Peter? Terz? Yeah, well, Mike hold that Terz, thought. Um, Mike Terz. Mike Terz. Mike Terz just because I don't like to change, but Mike Terz. Okay. Get it. Specially limited. Uh, while lamenting the nature of this latest expression, Mike Terz noted that it has expanded the acreage on its farm operations in Springfield, Kentucky, from 145 acres to 205. That will allow for more estate grown grain production. For future releases. So I, so my brother trucked me up um, a bottle of Michter's Rye. It's uh, would be the third. Uh, I don't want to say it's single barrel. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, my brother brought me up a bottle, and this week um, I fell into a bottle of Michter's Rye, 
limited release barrel strong. Did it fall when you hurt when you did it no, hurt when you no, fell? No, I into caught it? I caught that bitch right at the end, but anyway. It's it's sitting in and I have a lot of Mictor's products, you know, ten year and toasted and all that stuff. So um until I acquire some more bottles, and maybe yeah. one day we do a show on them. But anyway, I've never been disappointed. Mick, Michter Small Batch is one of my so favorites. So far, I've not had a Michter's that I didn't like. I Amen. To, Me to too. You know, it, so I'll just go, be, before we move to the next segment, so to say, um, uh, the uh, different batches, we, we were doing the uh, Tennessee, uh, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank. Um, we had the... Uh, uh, Michter's Rye, or not Michter's, um, from Tennessee. Jesus. The Dickel. Dickel. So Dickel, Dickel just released, so what? We had the different, not so years. Right. Not, not, you meant no, no, no. Dickel. Okay. Dickel. Yeah. You know, we had the different recipe, recipe eight, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, blah, 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 so to say. So they, so they just released a Michter's bourbon. I'm not Michter's. Damn it. Um, Dickel. Bourbon, gold. I know, right? You know, listen. It's it's been a goofy week for me. <laughs> I, I can barely even hold my coffee cup. But anyway, um, maybe I'm getting older, kids. I'm getting older. But anyway, um, so that's been released here in Ohio as well. So uh, Rich from the Auburn Inn, um, he uh, uh, had. I saw him yesterday. He bought a bottle of that as well, and uh, he sent me a, a picture. Uh, of him trying the Dickel bourbon, <laughs> which sorry. is a gold label, and wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. POC beer. Oh. POC? Where'd he get that at? Oh, well, he's got a little six pack for me waiting for him tomorrow. Well, piss on Cleveland. That's what we call it yeah. out here. So, anyway, I'm anxious to try that. I'm going to I'll grab a bottle of that tomorrow. I want to see a picture of the fridge uh, with the Dickel. So you know, I've never been disappointed with Dickel beer, Dickel bourbon, so to say. So I know. I'm, I'm sorry, we're we're I going know, downhill. I know. All right, let's close it out, kids. Uh, do you have anything out. else you want to say there, Doug? Yeah, just thanks for watching. If you're here watching live or watching this later on, because you can do that. Don't forget, if you missed the live show, remember if uh, we just uh, it's the views that help keep us going with this whole thing smash so, the like buttons kids yeah so subscribe like don't forget to subscribe all that kind of stuff follow us on facebook any questions please email us or uh, you know reach reach out to us on facebook. every show every show hit that hit that like button yeah if you've already awesome. subscribed hit that like button we appreciate it Thank and i'll you. leave with our uh Final quote. From Before you go there, yeah, can, oh, can yeah. I throw another picture up of your your pooch? Yes, yes. absolutely. Because we want to just again look at the face, the little poo poo. So he was um, he was um, to Pluto. He was seventy five percent beagle. We just at Christmas the girls wanted a test kit, so we did, and he's he was like twelve and a half percent miniature pincher and twelve and a half percent. Uh, pug, so uh, I didn't see any of that in him, yeah, but that's okay. The beagle, yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> beagle. The beagle. He's, uh, but um, I know he's up there in heaven, one of, one of his bollies watching down. So he's Amen. probably having a dram right hey, now. Yeah, I, I hope he can. Ho I, I hope while he's up there that he can make uh, the Indians pull something out of their ass. Okay. Oh, they yeah. just got rid of all, all that right. Here, here, even. Pluto. All right. Here, here. All right. And then uh, one of my uh, favorite. Uh, baseball player certainly for quotes. Todd McGraw said, "Whoever said laughter is the best medicine had clearly never tasted whiskey." Amen. Do you know Tuck McGraw is actually Tim McGraw's father? That's yes, right. that's right. That's right. All right, kids, let's roll out. Let's do this. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week and uh, moving into August, which is Scotch Month. So I hope you guys. Uh, uh, watch us then as well and uh, single yeah. moth. Exactly I'm looking right. forward to it now that I've got you know. I know. So until next week, safe travels, enjoy your weekend, catch up with you later. We are the Whiskey Roundtable. Big G. <laughs> Karen Helen Keller. <laughs> and and um, did you forget your name? Doug Dunbar. Are you sure? <laughs> 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 All right, folks. All right we'll kids, we'll catch time. you next week.
Be See safe. you later. Be safe. Bye bye. bye. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, cause nothing else would pay like bourbon or scotch. Oh no. Oh no, no. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth. Poor Jack D would be out of a job. Jameson and Bean would be cut off. Hank Williams songs wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, this whole damn world would be a mess. Oh, What the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably halfway out of this town, leaving Tennessee.